So as an electrical computer engineer, uh, when you're dealing with an electrical circuit, or maybe in particular electronic amplifier or electronic circuit, uh, you can look at it from two different perspectives. The perspective of analysis and design. And if I want to actually tell the difference between the two as simple as possible, analysis is when a circuit is given to you and all the parameters such as resistor values and the beta of your transistor and everything else that you need to know is given, and all you need to do is to analyze the operation of the circuit so that you can find out, well, what is the, for example, what is the currents and voltages in the circuit? What's the gain of amplifier? What's the power consumption? Pretty much everything is given to you and uh, you really need to actually find out um, how good or bad this circuit is at achieving basically a certain performance, right? So you analyze the circuit and you figure out, well, the gain is 10, you want a 20, so this is, this is not really a good circuit or something like that, right? Or you're just not you're not judging. You're just basically calculating the gain, calculating the power consumption, and you're you're just reporting the performance of the circuit. On the other hand, design is really the opposite of this process. You're a designer. You as an engineer, you do a lot of design work, and when when you're designing, generally any design question doesn't have any any unique answer in the end. Meaning that if there are, uh, there, there's a team of ten engineers. And you give them and all of them are capable and you give them a design question you might actually get 10 unique uh, answers that all of them are correct because when when we're dealing with a design uh, question the the way it starts is with a list of specifications right so your manager or like your customer they come to you they ask you for a list of specifications right Let's say that they, they tell you that I want an amplifier that has a gain equal to 20, um, a power consumption that is equal to one milliwatt, um, an input impedance that is equal to 10 kilo ohm, an output impedance that is equal to 10 ohms, and um, let's say an output voltage swing, voltage swing that is in the order of 1.5 volts for example by the way you probably don't know except for power you probably have a uh, very vague or no idea about what does each of these parameters mean we're going to talk about all of them today right but it starts with a list of what i wanted to uh, what, what i want to say is that your design question or design task always starts with a list of specifications right and whoever is giving you these specifications they don't care about uh how you are going to design this you can use one transistor you can use one million transistor well if you're dealing with a customer or a manager there's always this last parameter called cost right they tell you that well this many dollars you're allowed to actually uh, spend this many dollars but other than that they don't care a lot about like how you're going to do that that's your job that's your problem as far as they care they're paying for this so they want the certain specifications right that's why when you're designing, you have all the freedom and that's not necessarily a good thing. Generally, like you prefer, as we will go through these things, you will see that you prefer analysis. Like you prefer the circuit is given and you actually have to just analyze what's going on, right? But with design, you have to think about, okay, so like you have to really invent a circuit. You have to actually put stuff together to get the performance that you have been asked to. Of course, we're gonna learn about certain procedures in the design that helps you uh, get the performance that you want. But at the end of the day, you are the designer, so you have absolute freedom to, to do whatever you want. And that's that's really, um, it's, a, well, it's something that could be looked at as a disadvantage or something difficult. But at the same time, it's the, basically, it's, you, have the, you have the absolute freedom, so you can actually invent your own thing that's that like it opens your hands and you ma it makes you it makes you free to actually design whatever you want to design as long as it, it meets the uh, specifications and that's why if you give this uh, question to a team of engineers you might actually get multiple uh, unique answers and of course there's always the best design there's always a design that uh, meets all of these spe specifications at the, and then it costs less than anyone else or like it, it has the lowest power consumption right so like it, it gets the gain and the input and output impedance and the swing and the cost and then it only consumes one microwatt or 10 microwatt instead of one milliwatt right you can imagine that the battery life of that design is going to be just amazing right so 
there, is, there are good designs and there are bad designs. And then when it comes to design of amplifiers, generally we follow steps like we, we follow these gen generic steps, right? Um, there's no details in here yet. We're going to learn about design cases in, as we go forward with um, either bipolar transistors and later on with MOSFET transistors. And you're going to see like several, more than 20 examples along the way. But the general steps are you start with, always you start with a circuit like this. It'd be like basically uh, DC analysis of transistor circuits, right? And then you try to actually design and by design, I mean choosing the value of these resistors, choosing the value of these current sources to meet these specs, to meet the uh, what, whatever is asked from you. Like, for example, the power consumption or something like that. Right. And then because some of these specs, such as power consumption, are related to DC uh, analysis or DC operation of the transistor and some other ones, such as the gain, the yeah, this is a gain. The input impedance, the output impedance, the voltage swing. Well, no, the voltage swing is DC. Are so the green ones are actually in the uh, their AC analysis kind of parameters, and the red ones are DC analysis, right? So you do the DC analysis, you meet some of the requirements, and then we know that out uh, one thing that comes out of the DC analysis is the small signal parameters, GM, R pi, and R naught, right? Remember, GM was IC over VT, IC being the DC current of the transistor. R pi was beta over GM, R naught was basically VA over IC, VA being the early voltage and IC being again the DC current, uh, DC collector current of your transistor, right? You find these parameters and then you go to the AC analysis. So you go and uh, draw the small signal model of the circuit, which we have learned up to now. And in doing so, remember any DC current source becomes open, any DC voltage source becomes short, and then you draw this small signal model and then you calculate the gain and you calculate the input impedance and you calculate the output impedance, right? So gain, Z in and Z out come out of this and power and swing comes out of, they, they come out of DC analysis, okay? And then if you realize that, well, you designed, let's say you designed this current source to be uh, one milliamp, right? And then you calculated all the DC operating points, and then you calculated GM or, or pi and R naught, and then you moved on to this circuit, and you calculated the gain, and you realize, oh, my gain is actually 18, it's not 20, and I want a 20. Now you have to reiterate. So now you know that your gain is small, you have to think about how do I increase the gain? You either have to pay with the power consumption, or you have to actually change the value of a resistor, we're going to again learn about that, but then you have to reiterate, meaning that you go back to the DC, you change some stuff there, you cal you update your values of GM, R pi, and R naught, and then you go back and calculate, recalculate the gain until you meet all the specifications, and that's on only then you're actually done with your design. Okay, so these are the generic steps of a design. Uh, kind of a problem. That's how you. That's a design procedure. But uh, the specifics of that, if this sounds a little bit um, too generic for you and it's a little bit confusing, wait and see all the examples that we're going to solve, um, and then you will. All of these steps become more and more clear to you.